Welcome back to On One Photo Raw. And today we're gonna to take a look at two different items over here. We are gonna take a look at mask and refine edge on the tool palette over here inside of On One Photo Raw. Now the mask and the refine edge are used in conjunction. Basically, the mask button is creating a mask to hide or show different layers. And you can refine or control that mask using this refine edge brush right here. So I'm gonna show you how those two work. But the first thing that we need to do before we do any of that is we need to come over here and add a new layer because you can't hide or show two different layers if you only have one layer. So right over here, notice we have a little plus button and it says add layer. So we're gonna go ahead and click that and we're gonna add a new layer. I've already selected this before, but we're just gonna go ahead and go back. And this is where we were originally. And what we would have done is come over to browse and then I need to find that folder. So I have that inside of downloads and then the sky is where I have the image located. I'm gonna go ahead and hit open and then I'm gonna select the layer that I wanna add as a layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that, and then bam, just like that, it's gonna load this file up and add a new layer. Now the problem with this is, it's adding the layer on top of this layer. Layer order is important when working in photography. The way a mask works usually is you're hiding and showing different layers. We're actually gonna put this layer below it. Now you still could do this with doing the mask on this layer, but it would be much more difficult. But before we do that, we notice that this image is quite a bit smaller. So we're going to go ahead and manipulate this image to make it so it will fit. So we're gonna come over to transform that we looked at a little bit while ago. And we're gonna click on this button right here, which says fill canvas, and it's gonna fill that image. And that's gonna look good, so we're gonna apply that. And then we're gonna take this layer and we're gonna drag it down below. And you see right below that layer, it gets a little white line. That means that it is now below this layer. All right, so we turn this layer off and we can see that that layer is there. Now the issue here is we need the horizon lines to line up. So what I'm gonna do is go up to the horse layer and I'm gonna take my opacity down to about 50%. And what this is gonna allow me to do is see both images. So we can see this kind of ghost of the top image and the bottom image below it. And what I wanna do is select the actual sky image. And this is important that not only do you move something, but you move the correct layer and that layer needs to be selected. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna move this sky layer up. Now you can see the skies just starting to get close to matching up. Now I wanna do this just below it. I don't wanna go above the sky because then we're gonna get some of the foreground or mountains or grass in there and we don't want that. So we're just gonna go to about there and we're gonna stop. And then I can click back on this horse layer. I can move my opacity up to 100% and we're good. We have the horse layer on top and the sky on the bottom. Right now our mask is white, meaning it's showing everything on this layer. If we add black to this mask, it's gonna hide that area of this image and it's gonna show the image below it. So that's where the mask comes in. We wanted to say, hey, we wanna mask out a certain area so we can see the image below it. So we're gonna come over here to mask and we've got a whole bunch of different options. So I've got this first option, which is just a simple brush. And if I come in here and paint, you can see it's just showing that image. Well, why? Because it just painted black and it's showing that area below it. I'm gonna hit Command Z to undo that. We have a gradient. So the gradient we can drag down and it's gonna show. Now the gradient isn't gonna work in this case because it's also going to show the horse. Now we could go back in and paint the horse out and that's definitely an option, but we're gonna try something a little different. So we're gonna hit Command Z and undo that one. Then we're gonna to go to Artificial Intelligence where we paint an area, it analyzes that area and automatically makes a mask. We're not gonna do that either. So we're gonna undo that. And what we're gonna do is actually come back to this brush and we're gonna pick the perfect brush, which is located over here. And it gives you some information about the perfect brush. I'm gonna click don't show this again. 
because I don't want to show it again. Now, the way the Perfect Brush works is it automatically analyzes, and what it's looking for is just kind of the difference in the image. Now, this is a really simple image because the sky is kind of this bluish flat area, and then we have a completely different either sand or horse texture. So I'm gonna paint so the edge of the brush is just touching the sand. I want it to say, hey, that's the edge. If I did it like this, it's gonna do it the opposite way in which it thinks the edge is the sky, but I want the edge to be the sand. I'm just gonna paint along that area, and it's gonna automatically make its best mask that it can. Now I'm gonna remove, reduce this because I don't have enough room in here. So we're gonna go in, and then we're gonna go up along the edge of the horse, and then out here, and then up around his ear. And don't worry if this doesn't get perfectly done, because remember, we're gonna be able to refine this area using that refine edge brush. So we're going in here, and then we're just gonna go all the way across, pick that little area in here, and try to pick this. That did a horrible job, so I'm gonna hit Command Z. Looks like we just need to make the brush a little smaller. And then once I've made that selection, I don't really need to be using the perfect brush much longer. So what I can do is I can actually turn this off, just use a really big brush to finish selecting the rest of the area. It's pretty easy to do this part. Basically all I wanna do is select everything. So the bigger my brush, the less accurate I'm gonna be, but I can cover a whole lot more area. So we'll just get the main areas there. I'll reduce the size of that brush. Come in here and I'll get this area right here and pick up that area here. Now it looks like the image when we moved it shifted over to the right a little bit. That's not a big deal. We can always go back in there and fix that in just a second. But the first thing we wanna do is now fix this mask. So we did a pretty good job, but you can see Right down here, the horizon line, the difference, it's a little skittish there. It's picked up some areas that it shouldn't. So we're gonna click on the Refine Edge tool here. In the Refine Edge tool, this first brush, the Refine Edge brush is really done for hair. So it's gonna pick up these little strands of hair. And then we have this chisel mask here, and that you paint along the edges and it helps haloing. Sometimes when you make a mask, you can see this like little bright white or dark halo around the area. And basically, you're just trying to tell the computer, hey, I don't want that. I accidentally clicked the button, didn't mean to do that. So no, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna just paint along the edges and the computer is gonna analyze that and try to separate the two different areas and make a little bit better selection. So what I did with the red line is just say, hey, this is the area I really want you to look at and I want you to try to make a much better mask than you had. And you could see it added a whole lot more information back. And then we're gonna go along the top here, and this is gonna pick up all those strands of its mane and its tail that it might have messed up or not selected so well. So we're gonna paint over those areas, and the computer's gonna be like, oh, okay, I mean to pick up that area and make a better selection. So we're gonna be cool, we're gonna let that run through. It does take a little bit of time, it's quite a bit slow, but as long as it does a good job, I don't mind waiting. And we're gonna have to come in here to the horse, try to pick that area and see if we can get the computer to make a better selection there. Yes, that was much better. And then we'll just finish it out. Might as well go over this little edge and try to select that area out. And just like that, we've made our selection and masked out those areas. You can see right here, we've masked it out so that area is black on top, which we are hiding, and we are showing the white on the other edge. Now, you can invert these using Command-I, that will invert the mask, Command-I to invert it back the other way. What we're gonna do is actually select the image, and we're gonna actually select this bottom image down here, and we're gonna go back to transform, and we're just gonna stretch this image out to this way a little bit so we get full coverage. And once we're done, we'll just go ahead and hit apply. And now we're not getting that little translucent area over there. And that is basically it. We have selected these two different areas using a combination of the mask and the refine edge tool. Now, this takes a while to get used to using this type of stuff. This is something you just need to practice with. You need to practice using the chisel and practice using the refine edge tool. And eventually you'll get an idea of which one you should be using where and how to use them. 
there's no magic trick that I can really tell you to get this to work perfect. A lot of just photography is practice within the program. So hopefully that's been helpful and you learned a little bit about masking inside of On One Photo Raw. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.